exhausting. With lunch, I had a can of Coca-Cola. Instead of enjoying the refreshing black fizz, I kept thinking, hey, didn't these guys use death squads in South America at one point? Enjoyment gone. Later in the day, I sat down to finally play through the COD Modern Warfare campaign. It was a fun little shoot em up game until I saw them take a literal American war crime in Iraq and casually blame it on the Russians. There is only one road, Tariq al the highway of death. The Russians bombed it during the invasion. The convoy was reported to be on the highway. Every plane available bombed the highway for two days straight. Pilots called the three mile long stretch of charred bodies and vehicles the, the highway, highway of, of death. death. Initial reports were of tremendous carnage, thousands dead. Um, enjoyment gone. My little cousin came over, played K-pop on the TV and started doing a little dancey dance. It was incredibly wholesome. Then I remembered that uh, what we're watching are basically dancing slaves owned by massive record label conglomerates. <laughs> enjoyment gone. I went out for a nice dinner and a party, ordered veal, remembered I'm eating a literal baby. <laughs> Enjoyment gone. Went clubbing afterwards. It was a decent rave. Went outside for some fresh air. Saw a homeless guy who could probably live off of what I just spent inside for two weeks. Enjoyment gone. Went hangover to work the next morning, but that's fine. I'm motivated by the great things we're doing for our clients and my chance to do my part. Remembered, I am only a tiny cog in a massive corporate machine which would replace me in a week in the case of my death. A corporate machine that pays me 50 bucks for every five thousand I make them. You guessed it. Enjoyment gone. Remembered it was Valentine's Day on my way home. Hey, what's up, guys? Passed through the mall and got a really nice perfume for my lady. Such a wonderful holiday. It's time to show our loved ones how much we care and surprise them with a nice gesture. My heart was warm until I remembered that it's nothing more than a global marketing campaign used to push us into visiting more restaurants, buying more shit and spending outside of our capabilities. Only so that we can leech off of that one good thing we did that day for the coming few months whenever we exhibit toxic or narcissistic behavior. Yeah, enjoyment gone. You'd think going to bed would be a safe place. Oh, no, 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 no. The second I close my eyes, I begin to ponder at the absolute meaninglessness which my life will still statistically speaking, eventually lead to the incredible unfair nature of our socioeconomic structure, dread of death, despair, war, or worst of all, mediocrity. There's too much to be done. I can't just sleep now. I can't just know how to... This is why I tell you all the time to enjoy shit. <laughs> Hey, 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 what's going on? There is no larger, permeating stereotype about the modern leftist than the idea that he is utterly incapable of enjoying anything. They're constantly seen as easily offendable, wildly over-analytical, snobby, pretentious, and quote, inject politics into everything. The gentle laborer shall no longer suffer. They're apparently the reason we can't have anything nice anymore. This is why we can't have nice things, you asshole! Like big anime titties, skin-tight outfits in Mortal Kombat, or worst of all, leads in movies played by non-minorities. I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude! <laughs> what? Now, while it would be easy to dismiss these sorts of stereotypes as having come from the shallow minds of Reddit basement dwellers... That example is so perfect. Because, like, it's the only time you see that example being used for what it actually is. A critique of precisely what that was referencing. Also, I have yet to meet a single real person who has ever been mad at Tropic Thunder. Ever. Ever. Like, the, the most acceptable use and form, and perhaps one of the few acceptable uses and form of, of uh, educational blackface. But every few months, you have some motherfucker on the timeline, quote unquote, cancel it, but worse than that, other motherfuckers who say, we're going to watch Tropic Thunder because people are canceling it. No one is actually fucking canceling it. It's not real. 
Okay? It's not a real thing. The video, the, the, the movie itself is quite literally making a reference and, and, and making a joke about Hollywood utilizing Australian actors instead of, like, actual black actors. That is the joke. It's a very good joke. Which is precisely why I've yet to meet a real human being that looks at that and goes, wow, that's really fucked up. Only on Twitter. You walk now into the belly of the beast. I suspect that you've heard of me before. Which had spread like wildfire in the days of the dark YouTube ages of the 2016's anti-SJW craze. I sincerely doubt there is any self-conscious politically left-leaning person out there who wouldn't, at least to an extent, admit that there is some truth to, well, this stereotype. I mean, come on, we can be pretty insufferable sometimes. I found myself True. explaining to a guy who just got broken up with how it's capitalism's fault as he was literally crying in front of me. I caught myself switching movies off midway because of an idiotic ahistorical depiction of some past event. Buying literally anything new makes me feel like a total schmuck because at the baseline of it all, I understand that I'm just doing it because I internalize this or that advertising campaign's image of a totally unnecessary product. But, and this is a big but. There is a massive difference between the self-critical view leftists have of themselves not being able to enjoy anything versus the one coming from the right or center of the so-called political spectrum. The key difference is why they can't enjoy things. One comes from a place of... Well, I can. And not only that, but I tell you, you should. Okay? It's it. That's my argument. You should. Life is too short. We're all going to fucking die. Be the best person you physically possibly can. But also... You know, enjoy the, the, the minor delicacies. Enjoy the things that, uh, that give you pleasure. Rage at the status quo, at the small and big injustices, while the other rises from a deeply insecure ego that tries to explain away why they, unlike these lefty snowflakes, somehow aren't able to see what the big fuss is about. A combination of massive privilege mixed with the classic I went through shit, so you should too mentality. The right implies we can't enjoy anything because we're soft, because we overthink things, because we're easily offendable. The same ideological current that wants to ban TikTok because... Chimbiling, CCP, communist lizard, China man, connect to Wi-Fi, very scary. Mr. Chu, does TikTok access the home Wi-Fi network? Bringing up softness and offendability is like the inbred kettle calling the pot the N-word. I like to argue the opposite. It's not weakness, but rage and anger that guides us. A rage towards an insufferable world we just can't seem to swallow and accept. An anger that builds up with every minute we have to spend pretending everything's all right. Anger, which just like in its physical form, unfortunately sometimes comes bursting out at the worst or most absurd of times. But it's not the anger that is the problem. Nah, I'm not your Zen teacher here. Go buy that somewhere else. The anger is bloody great. It's just misplaced. I don't know about you, but I've always had my fair share of anger issues. My nose was broken twice, and some of my fingers don't even close up completely from how many times I've mangled them against foreheads, noses, and doors. Even though nowadays I write that off as a stupid kid uh, being a stupid kid, I also realize that many of those avoidable events came as consequences of pent-up anger expressing itself at the wrong time at the wrong place. Pent-up anger which wasn't addressed properly until the bottled up pressure became so hard to handle that something as light as a butterfly's weight could drop it off a cliff. Well, most young and learning anti-status quo people as I see them are just that. Angry, confused, lost. Rightfully angry, confused, and lost. But with an unfortunate lack of vision on when punches should be thrown and 
when they should Exactly. There's a reason why. I mean, I love the Deprogram podcast. I've been on their podcast. Or like, you know, you will probably recognize that a lot of the concepts that uh, you got is talking about are are identical to to my worldview as well. While writing this, I said, okay, these are all great rhetorical arguments, but how about we make them a bit clearer to ourselves or anyone listening to this who might be on the fence regarding the is the left cringe for caring too much question. So let's just go through, I don't know, five examples of shit leftists seemingly can't enjoy as much as other people and why. Um, let's get some logistics out of the way first, though. As you might know, I'm not the biggest fan of the term leftist, as it encompasses some ideological movements which are, to say the least, very incompatible. No fighting. No fucking fighting. No fighting. No fucking fighting! Good. Good. <laughs> But uh, I ask uh -huh. you to stomach through this anti-sectarian utopian dream of mine for the length of this video as it's both a wide enough and strict enough of a net to cast on the types of people I'll be talking about here. Okay, so here we go. Five examples of shit leftists seemingly can't enjoy and why. Let's see if we can spot a pattern. News! <laughs> <laughs> talking about news! <laughs> in the news today <laughs> doing it every way news news why we can't enjoy the news usually the way news works in the west is you pick a tribe and then you only watch the shit the people from your tribe show on tv you foam at the mouth with a pitchfork in hand can't be an angry mob without a pitchfork then go online to complain about either the illiterate cousin fucking rednecks or the college graduate cross-dressing pedophiles. To us from the sideline, the true left, all this seems equally weird and entertaining because we don't really have a news cycle backing anyone like us. Hell, our understanding of how privately owned media works makes most news completely indigestible to us. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. No matter how objective it tries to be, when news is a business, it will never cross certain boundaries. Boundaries like questioning the system or, God forbid, pitching an alternative to the status quo. 721, 2021. Oh my God, Hassan has my video in tabs. Oh my God, if you watch my vid, I'll shit myself. Damn, bro. It took me like fucking two years. I went on his podcast before I actually ended up watching his video. This is now, this is probably his, <clears throat> this is probably his old account. It probably opened up another one. Yeah. Yeah, look, see, 721 is the last message he uh, sent, and then he opened up a new account. And then swapped it over. Where's your Dua Lipa shirt? I'm a real one, baby. It's me, assholes. Chat betrayal. Push-ups are awesome. R running is made by Satan himself. You either become like a good leftist and a good content creator and uh, don't uh, just fucking resent me uh, or uh, hate yourself for watching me like you got Nick or you become like one of those fucking weird losers who uh, watched me for a very long time and then fucking turned around and is now like, oh, I'm above that shit. I'm so much better than he is. Fuck that guy. Whoa. So, put simply, we would love to join this little slap fest you call the discourse. Kill Christ cucks, behead Christ cucks, roundhouse kick a Christ cuck into the concrete, slam dunk a Christ cuck baby into the trash can. We need a military that's flat out hostile. We need a military full of type A men who want to sit on a throne of Chinese skulls. But our understanding of just how much of a waste of time it mm. is designed to make you not think about your real problems. I hate the media! 
makes us understand it's not much more than just the really, really bad TV. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided oh. by the beauty of our weapons. Fucking Why asshole. Why don't presidents fight the war? Why do they always send the board? Why don't presidents fight the war? Why? Why we can't enjoy national identity. Look, I'm as proud as any self-respecting Balkan boy of his culture. <laughs> thousand year old heritage and the fact that we're basically the only white people who never enslaved anybody but boy oh boy am i sometimes jealous only because you know <clears throat> someone else got there before they did you know what i mean sorry i apologize for my people so just how big of a part of your personality some of you make it Two simple truths push most leftists away from nationalist fervor. Number one is class consciousness, understanding that you have far more in common with workers of all nations than you do with the ruling class of your own country, a political and financial elite which often preaches hatred among the same working class people across different cultures and ethnicities. So patriotism without class consciousness feels kind of like not really rooting for your own team, if that makes sense. And second, I'll just let George Carlin rip it. God bless America, is that a request? Is that a demand? Is that a suggestion? Politicians say it at the end of every speech, as if it were some sort of verbal tick that they can't get rid of. God does not give a flying fuck about America, okay? He doesn't care. There are 200 countries in the world now. Do these people honestly think that God is sitting around picking out his favorites? So, a combination of knowing you had no hand in choosing your geography, flag, history, or hymn, and the knowledge that 9 out of 10 times if you get sent to the front you'll be shooting other working class schmucks while the sons of your presidents sit comfortably in Bali are why it's not exactly surprising when you see leftists cringe and wince at hyper-patriotic empty gestures. You mean... We're all going to, to die, Mansley, for our country. Screw our country! I want to live! <laughs> Why we can't find comfort in self-help philosophy, or new age philosophy? This one's more for the liberals out there. Everyone who's ever stumbled or fallen in life knows how hard it can be to find an adequate coping mechanism. While searching for one, many of us, hell most of us, have had run-ins with what I like to call the two fake deep philosophies out there. One is the self-help military industrial complex, and the second is ass spiritual enlightenment. Life. Are we just fleshy blips in some meaningless stew of cosmic oblivion? Or is it vice reversa? Or what I like to call escapism, but made to sound like a coherent school of thought. The first, the self-help category, implies that everything can be solved if only you figure out the puzzle which is the world economy. Yeah, I'd like to solve the puzzle. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to solve the puzzle. That's it, yeah. <laughs> and use a special cheat code, a special trick nobody else knows except you, to get yourself out of any mess. Nobody else knows except you? Which, by the way, is always, like, what everybody knows. I've never seen, like, capitalist self-help that doesn't just tell you the basic things that you've learned since, like, La Fontaine novels that you read as a child, okay? It's literally the same shit repackaged over and over again only 999.99 a month to join our seminar and we will teach you more or the latter idea a quasi spiritual pitch sold to us by con men who oh i wasn't even talking about like drop shipping and like uh you know buy a property and become a landlord shit i was just i was talking about like the basic stuff like the 48 laws of power like that kind of self help shit is always like so basic it's like what I tell you all the time, it's, it's the same principle that 
the fundamentals of any self-help revolve around a shared understanding of like values and principles that we already know about that we've heard a million times over. It's always like whether it's clean your uh, bed or whatever the fuck, it's always just short-term goals, mid-term goals, and long-term goals that you uh, that you set for yourself. And when you achieve those goals, the short-term ones that are like really manageable, you start feeling better and you start rewarding yourself. Your brain starts fucking releasing hormones that make you go, oh, this is good. Maybe I should do more of that. And then you just basically build healthy habits. That's it. It's no different than every fucking diet that is a fad being built on top of the basic fundamentals of calories in, calories out. That's it. That's it. Huh. Know nothing about metaphysics and yet try to pitch us ideas of internalizing the world. They take beautiful, deep concepts like self-actualization, finding peace within, understanding the subjectivity of experience, and so on and so on, and pitch it as an escapist tool for people who are down on their luck. Don't think about changing your material circumstances. Don't question why you're in this or that situation. How did I get here? Don't revolt. Just pull yourself inwards and imagine and create a world of your own. Live only in it. What happens outside of it matters not. Well, until you get hungry. So, yes, we can't enjoy either of these concepts and ideas not only because they're commodified beyond recognition, turned into fast-moving consumer goods, but also because of a key philosophical flaw in them, the unrealistic, hyper-individualist perspective that we can and should handle everything on our own. No communities, no systems, no grander social structure. It's just you and your bootstraps. You don't make it, well, your fault. The era of the underpaid employee Spitting 40 plus a week and trying to rape Earth in my all time You bored dizzy, I can't keep myself busy enough So you can run, run, run And I'ma let you think you won Why we can't enjoy most of our jobs this is a big one for me and for most young adults trying to find their place in the global job marketplace. The daily grind for quite a while used to be explained away by internal corporate propaganda or what they call corporate culture in almost well all industries. Many, to this day, unflinchingly jump at the opportunity to believe it. Understandably so. I mean, being underpaid, overworked, and pushed on the daily are all things humans can swallow, even proudly, but only if you give them a cause to believe in. We're told, this is what we stand for, this is our vision, you're a part of a larger family, this is a place where you can maximize your potential, and so on, and so on, and so on. All great slogans, but all empty gestures once you understand that no matter what industry, no matter what position, de facto, your boss does not pay you even close to how much you make him. And this resounding, undeniable fact makes all the fancy wording and talk of purpose, family, and a cause sound like pathetic, childish gesturing. The leftists' inability to enjoy most work in this system is caused by their choice to internalize and understand that at the end of the day they're being played and played hard. Once you know that, only a weakling can go back to lying to themselves. And like the point of non-capitalism is just to make it easier to achieve those goals because trying to do it under capitalism is fucking depressing. Why would you try to change yourself? No, you should still try to change yourself. That's, uh, I mean, I, I still advocate for self-help type shit. I, I definitely, definitely still very much advocate to, to try and, and overcome your material realities as best as you can uh, even if you cannot actually fulfill all of your goals, uh, even the journey itself will be a prosperous and healthy one. Has anyone asked you to watch the news Nick Crowley video, by the way? Uh, no, I have not. What the fuck? What is this? Mr. Swirled, Internet's most disturbed user? I don't know if we can watch this because uh, if it's showing like disturbing graphic imagery, I don't think I'll be able to watch it. Uh, 
Um, yeah, you you definitely should go to the gym. It'll make you feel better. You know what I mean? Like, reads like a lol cow video. I don't know. In German, police uncovered a hard drive filled with numerous photos depicting graphic images and inserted within all of them was a man hiding behind a distorted swirling face. <sighs> It'd be even more prosperous and healthy if we adhere to the principles of laissez-faire capitalism. Yeah. Because nobody embodies this. Oh, I thought this guy was being sarcastic. Wait. Wait, is this guy being serious? If Ayn Rand had her way, none of these issues would exist? No. He said, not at all. Long time chatters that stop watching you be like, of course that's your contention. You watch Hasanabi and sub for nine months. You read zero theory, no Marx or Lenin, and naturally see the dumbest liberal shit in chat. Until next year, you will be sub for so long thinking you know more theory than Assam because you watched memes on Marxism. Don't even have to go to the gym. I just bought a pair of 20 pound dumbbells just to do small 20 minute daily workouts with them. Yeah. We are going to watch the Disco Elysium uh, uh, documentary, even though it's two hours and 30 minutes. And I don't want to watch the entire thing. Yeah, I have seen the shit going on with FaZe. We're going to cover that too. <laughs> why we can't enjoy mindless consumption. But okay, you can't enjoy your job, but if it pays relatively well, you should be able to find happiness outside of work, right? Get in, loser, we're going shopping. You can buy things, buy experiences, blah, blah, blah. And while sure, there's no denying capitalism's inability to mass produce crazy diverse amounts of, well, stuff, this privilege too is unfortunately eventually outgrown. Similar to substance abuse, there is nothing necessarily evil or bad in the substances themselves. But depending on the reason you take them, your experiences will be wildly different. Consumerism is the same. There's no shame in enjoying the little material trinkets we can. But once it becomes a coping mechanism, a way to get our daily, weekly, and monthly fix in order for that little dope dopamine rush to stop us from thinking about our lack of true self-fulfillment or self-actualization of, well, finding purpose, then we're no different. This is directed at, think this is directed at you, fam. You think Yugopnik and I actually have a disagreement on the, on like driving cars, like driving nice cars? Did you misunderstand the point that he's making? Moldavite wormhole? Just messing with you about the consumption stuff? For the record, he is literally a defender. Like, openly a defender. He's, he's a Balkan man. You think he doesn't want fucking a nice car? He drives a Beamer, brother. For the record, just... Just so you know... <laughs> I'm glad that we now have a new Moldovan chatter, by the way. Holy fuck. And then an addict hooked up on a steady supply of Amazon boxes piling up on the front doorstep. We try to tell ourselves we're doing great because, well, look at all the stuff we have. And that's exactly why leftists, even though we struggle with it, at the end of the day, can't fully enjoy consumerism because we know that the high of a purchase is followed by the hangover realization that, well, you're still as lost as you were before. You just also have an electric scooter now. The lie that we can find purpose in mindless consumption is the greatest epidemic of our time. So sorry if we can't. You can't find, uh, you can't find peace 
in mindless commodity consumption. You can't. Commodities can't make you feel better, though. You know where you can actually find a, a genuine peace, though? Peace comes from within, okay? It's the things that I just mentioned with respect to fucking self-help. Not the top of the hour, Chad. It's the middle of the hour. Chill. God damn it. You guys are so fucking crazy. No. No. It's you only find peace from within by, you know, setting yourself out, setting goals for yourself and achieving them, making yourself pro uh, progress. You know, learning a new language, let's say. Fucking working out at the gym. Or the gym of the brain. The library. <laughs> Fuck. Exactly. Enjoy it. Well, okay, that was five, wasn't it? I could go on with even more examples all day, but I'd rather not keep you for much longer. The main pattern between all these examples is simple. The leftist understands that in the current system, be it mindless shopping, the news, chauvinism, job, unfulfillment, or quasi-philosophy, there is a direct struggle between our wants to see the world as what it truly is and constant manipulation trying to steer us away from realizing that. This sort of understanding that all things are ideological and that most things are often far more complicated than what they may seem. How does leftist ideology provide purpose, though? I thought purpose is not bound by economics. Wait, what? Purpose is not bound by economics. But uh, there are people who operate within the framework of capitalism and tell you that like your only purpose is to, to fucking get your money up, not your funny up. If anything, it's like the, the, uh, like even your fucking hobbies have turned into work, right? That's a, that's a good example of it. Like just play fucking video games for fun, for example, but then all of a sudden you're doing it on stream and then people are yelling at you if you don't do it on stream and telling you that you're fucking lazy or telling you that you're too much of a view count Andy. And it's like, well, I also do enjoy playing video games off stream by myself. You know what I mean? It's for enjoyment. I want to have it for myself. You know, a little little treat for me. Uh, Carnage, uh, Carnage Jack, thank you for the tank gift of subs. Does lead to us objectively not being able to enjoy quite, quite a lot of things. And while we need to remember that we have only this one life and that it the is... The other video guy literally said that your chat aspires to spending lots of money like one-time Gucci shirts. We do not aspire to that Lamau. Yeah, that's... It's silly, but like everyone to a certain degree aspires towards making expensive commodity purchases and what I mean, or a lot of people do, not everyone, but it's just not a fucking lame ass Gucci shirt. It's going to be something different. It's going to be figurines. It's going to be something that you're collecting. It's, it's going to be something that you ascribe a lot of value to. It's going to be a fucking PS5 that is gathering dust because you originally thought that it was going to be something that you can play a lot of video games in, maybe even old games that they do remakes of and remasters of that will make you remember a time that where, where you know, you were alive and young and had dreams and, and remember those memories fondly. But now that fucking expensive machine is just collecting dust because there's not really any new games that are coming out because Sony is too busy, I don't know, doing fuck all, as a matter of fact. Who knows what the fuck Sony's doing? But now that Metal Gear Solid 3 is coming out, you can live that dream. You can live that dream, once again, like you're a child, like you're a kid. You know, you're a teenager, and, and you know, your, your life is ahead of you. It's possible to appreciate problematic shit and engage with it critically, acknowledging its flaws while also finding value in them. We also need to stay firm in our beliefs, no matter how annoying it might be for those who haven't yet come to the same realizations. Remember, please, pick your battles. And most importantly, if everyone was content with everything, we would still be hitting rocks over each other's heads. Your instinct to be critical of the status quo and your drive for more are a gift. Do not lose it. Do not be ashamed of it. Because while ignorance might be bliss, bliss doesn't get anything done. My work would be impossible without the generous support. Um, yeah, Ugopnik, go sub to his channel. This is the last one. Surviving in capitalism.
Okay, I don't want to watch this. This is too much. It's like, you've already watched enough. You got Nick. <laughs> 